Um, I'm going to give you a very quick tour through the uh, government's investments in rural water infrastructure, focused around the work in irrigation. And then uh, just a bit of coverage of the sort of water recovery task overall, because the two programs, um, Water for, for the Future is the sort of overarching water investment initiative of the government. And the two by far the largest investments are the Sustainable Rural Water Use and Infrastructure Program, colloquially known as SWERPI, and the Restoring the Balance in the Basin, which is the Water Buyback Program. These are the main mechanisms by which water is to be recovered using market means to recover the gap. And br the bridging the gap commitment from the government in 2010 is that all the water required to bridge the gap between the current diversions in the basin and the SDLs set by the MDBA, and uh, assuming the plan is approved by government as in the final plan, um, that that will be recovered uh, by government that no irrigator who wishes to stay in irrigation will suffer any loss to their water entitlements. So just a quick tour through Swerpy to start with. It was established in 2008. It's the largest of the Water for the Future programs with total funding of 5.8 billion. It's actually a national program and there are investments in Western Australia and Tasmania, but the lion's share of the funding is dedicated towards projects in the basin to assist reform there. And the water recovered through many of the projects funded under SWERPI goes towards bridging the gap. This is the family tree for SWERPI. Uh, so a large component of the funding was essentially pre-committed in the intergovernmental agreement that underlies the whole creation of the basin plan that was made in 2008 between the Commonwealth and the basin states. And in that agreement, the Commonwealth committed uh, $3.2 billion for infrastructure projects, agreed in principle, but then they had to go through due diligence to final delivery. Um, most of them are to be led by the states, those are the ones on the left-hand side, some to be delivered directly by the Commonwealth because in some cases the infrastructure bodies requiring investment, the, infra the irrigation districts, are actually in private hands, and so a direct relationship between them and the Commonwealth works best. There's also other commitments that are delivered directly by the Commonwealth. The, probably the most notable in the basin is the Commonwealth's on-farm irrigation efficiency program, where we work directly with local delivery partners for rolling out batches of on-farm improvements. And Swerby also funds a range of other initiatives, including strengthening the national water market system, uh, working with the Basin States on strengthening their compliance and enforcement regimes. It's also funded resource assessments by CSIRO, so to get the fundamental water uh, information to underpin future development. Uh, this map is really just a quick scan of where the investment is going in large, medium and small projects through SWERPI in the infrastructure space. And you can see the, uh, there's a greater concentration in the southern connected system, and this is where the greater reduction is expected to occur under the basin plan. So back to the state priority projects. In the intergovernmental agreement, it actually set the objectives for those projects that they were meant to achieve. They're quite a mixed bag of uh, initiatives across the states, but they have these basic objectives. And it also set the criteria under which project plans were to be assessed. So it's to increase and improve um, efficiency and productivity of rural water use and management. Really, the, the aim is to position irrigation communities for a long-term sustainable future. But what's different about this investment um, from normal agricultural investment or assistance programs is that there is a return of a share of the water savings to the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth acquires a capital asset through the program and that water goes towards the held environmental water that Rhonda was talking about. And overall, the aim is to uh, deliver value for money. There are benefits well beyond the water savings, and I'll come to those a bit later. But there is a strong focus now, given the priority given to infrastructure investment and the expectations that these projects will deliver substantial returns of water to help bridge the gap in a way that has a lower impact than direct water purchase. So what sorts of things are being funded, as well as the sort of 
classic off-farm, on-farm irrigation. As I said, it's funding for the planning underpinning for good project development. So over 80% um, of the irrigation water in districts in the basin, that now is subject to, or it's developed, modernisation plans using grants from Swerby. So the local irrigation corporations or bodies have developed a forward business plan for their district in terms of what their footprint should be, what standard of delivery they want to have in the future. They've done, we've funded hotspots assessments to look to see where the leaky parts of the systems are and where the best investment would be. So quite, it's a, a modest investment overall from the program, but it's been very important in terms of the information and technical underpinning for good project development. There's also projects which focus more on the environmental side of things. These are looking at either returning parts of the system to more natural flows where that's feasible, or achieving better environmental outcomes through uh, it works and measures of, of um, various sorts. So probably a, uh, an example of that is the River in Recovery Project in South Australia, looking at changes to how some of the parts of the South Australian Murray and some of the backwaters are managed to both save water and achieve better ecological outcomes there. And the large investment in the Lower Lakes itself and the large project there in South Australia is another example. There's a small investment stream also for municipal water saving projects. I've talked through the planning and investigations. And this is where the planning grants have gone in terms of helping the irrigation bodies strengthen their plans for the future and work out what the best investment they can do is in their infrastructure. <coughs> These are the sorts of investments in off-farm. Uh, some of them are landscape scale refits like Enverp, uh, the Northern Victorian Irrigation Renewal Project, and large projects in the New South Wales um, irrigation bodies in, the, in southern New South Wales. And each project is different. They're a different mix of refit, upgrade, channel lining, and in some cases, rationalising parts of their system out of irrigation, and helping with decommissioning in those areas and providing alternate stock and domestic supply. So these are the sort of poster children of the, of the off-farm investment, uh, the so-called PIOP, the uh, New South Wales Private Irrigation Infrastructure Operators Program, and Enverb. Enverb is the largest single investment, and that's a billion dollars to refit the whole of the, uh, well, it's with a billion dollars investment from Victoria as well to modernise the entire system there. And while keeping much of the irrigated agriculture still there, to actually reduce the um, kilometreage of the channel system very significantly and upgrade the standard of delivery. On-farm investment is really uh, delivered by a number of uh, programs, but it always focuses on business decisions by the individual farmers that they assess as working for them. So it will be horses for courses. There's no one size fits all. It's really uh, working with local delivery partners who then work with farmers to work out what are the changes that are really going to work for them with assistance from the government in terms of the transition they want to make on farm. And they need to know it's going to work for them because for, at the start of, in, before any works co contract is started with any farmer, the share of water coming to the Commonwealth has to be transferred to the Commonwealth at the start of the project. So they need to have really worked out that the cha change is going to work that it's a good business proposition and that the water savings are going to be real and that they essentially can afford to pass over the water savings at the start of the project. And there's a number of ways that's being delivered. The biggest one is the on-farm program in the Southern Basin. Just coming back to the project assessment, for the really large landscape project, scale projects, that, this is a very large piece of technical work. For the major state priority projects that's now behind us, but it was a very extensive uh, period of technical assessment of these projects, looking at every aspect of them according to the criteria set in the intergovernmental agreement. So looking at all the engineering, water balance, technical stuff. Also the socioeconomic assessment, the cost benefit analysis for the project overall, the assessment of where it sits in that irrigation region and what it will do for it. Also looking at the environmental impacts and the water balance, the ups and downs uh, in terms of environmental impact flowing from the project. 
and the governance and the way the project is going to be rolled out. Just a quick uh, couple of other things that are funded from Swerpy that are worth mentioning. Uh, most recently, the government set aside $10 million for the states to do uh, further investigation of potential works for environmental works and um, measures. These are feasibility studies. There's, a, there's lots of proposals around the basin for if you just did this to this particular area or this wetland, you could save water or you could get a much better outcome from the water that goes to that site. And it's basically funding the feasibility studies for the projects that the states have I identified as being the best prospects for those sorts of works. And this could be for both water saving, but also offsets enabling, if it's feasible, and the MDBA will be very closely involved in this, that if by doing particular works or measures, you can actually reduce the need for environmental water, and that can be factored up into the basin plan, it may allow for an offset against the SDL reductions. There's also the municipal projects I mentioned, and this is helping towns in the basin to use their water more um, cleverly at the local level, but they don't have to share the savings with us. It's really just for them, uh, both planning and infrastructure projects at the town level. And this project is really unusual in that we're working with a very wide array of delivery partners, everything from large, sophisticated corporations or directly with large state government agencies, down in some cases to individual irrigators. And industry bodies, rice growers, tomato growers, bodies such as that, who in some cases bring together suites of on-farm projects for us. So it's a very wide array of people who are actually on the ground delivering these projects and are working with us to do that. So the contractual relationships vary um, across the basin in terms where, of how we're doing that. One of the tricky issues at the start of this process was working out the legal relationships for securing more water from the projects to the Commonwealth satisfaction in terms of certainty of the water coming across and for risks to be managed on all sides, particularly if it's a three-way relationship between us, the delivery partner, say a local CMA or an industry body, and a group of farmers. So each of those individual farmers has to have a works contract that works and gets the water, but they get what they want happening on their farm. So the water recovery from Swerpy goes towards bridging the gap. The estimate is that the total return on the projects that are already in contract or close to contract and the expected return on the remaining funds within Swerpy is that that will yield around 600 gigalitres towards the 2750 that's in the draft plan. Once the, uh, we have a works contract agreed and clear legal line of sight to the water coming from that project, we include the water in that uh, that's in that contract, that's specified in that contract in our recovery tables. And so you can see on the website that I'll give you at the end of this presentation, month by month we update the water recovery both through the infrastructure programs and through the water buyback and combine that uh, as well to show the global recovery. We also keep track with the help of the authority of the recoveries through state programs, so we report on the total recoveries towards bridging the gap in each catchment.